of Israel's race, he ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace, and crown and crown him Lord of all. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. Thank you very much. Please remain standing for prayer. Pastor. Right. Well, praise the Lord. It's good to see each and every one of you out this evening. Thank you so much for coming out this evening. Beautiful day. And praise the Lord for it. It's been a wonderful weekend. Now, afterwards tonight, if you're able to, we'd love to have you stick around. Uh, the Brahms and the Lindsays are going to be celebrating their anniversary. And uh, to do that, they're providing us with cupcakes, cake, and ice cream. And so praise the Lord. Take advantage of that. And uh, we'd love to have you stick around for a few moments and enjoy that time of fellowship. But Brother Brahm, in honor of that, why don't you open us up with a word of prayer? All right, you may be seated. Let me run through some announcements here, and then I've got just a few uh, prayer requests to ask you to pray for. Um, but uh, it was a blessing to get our Sunday schools open today, and uh, praise the Lord for that. Had a wonderful time, and appreciate you teachers and all of you who came out. Uh, next week we will have the pre-K class open, and so parents take advantage of that. A couple weeks from today we'll have the nursery open, and so do be praying for that as we just continue to take steps forward, that all would go well, and that people would stay healthy, and that God willing, he'll just bless in us in a tremendous way. Next Sunday night, uh, before the evening service, between 5 and 6 p.m., we're going to be providing a meal, and uh, Brother Tim Kozlowski is going to help coordinate that. We've got several ladies who are putting that on, but if you can give Brother Tim a heads up, he'll get you kind of scheduled, and he's done a wonderful job with that the last couple of times, and uh, so he's going to get us all lined up there, and uh, then then he's going then he's done with it, if I'm not mistaken. He's 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 done. He's just gonna he's not even watching, man. He's just. He's just walking off, but he'll, he'll get you scheduled so you get food, and so we'll look forward to that. Uh, it's going to be a hamburger, some potato salad, uh, cookie, and I don't know if they're throwing anything else in there, but it'll be good. It's possible. We're just going to have a great time. And so, but to take advantage of that, and next Sunday night between 5 and 6 p.m., and by the way, you're welcome to eat it in the parking lot, downstairs the fellowship hall, the school basement. If the weather's like this, eat it outside. And so take advantage of that next Sunday night between 5 and 6 p.m. Tuesday, June 16th, there's a Senior Saints potluck luncheon that will be at St. Ferial Island at the large shelter from 11 until 1. And so take advantage of that down by uh, the Mississippi River there. Uh, let me see here then. Uh, John Jungle Camp uh, for the boys is going to be Friday, June 19th, and Saturday, June 20th. Um, we're going to have a ladies' breakfast then, ladies, Tuesday, June 23rd, 8.15 a.m. That'll be at Hungry House. Come ready to share a verse that has helped you through these trying times. Uh, Saturday, June 27th, about a month out, there's going to be our ladies' summer social. And the ladies take advantage of that. That'll be from 10 in the morning till 1 p.m. Uh, Mrs. Wendy Burks uh, from, with Reformers Unanimous Ministries, a wonderful speaker, is going to be coming and sharing her heart with, with the ladies ladies, and then also uh, Mrs. Rebecca Weiss, her husband pastors in Madison Baptist Church in Madison, Wisconsin. And so I think both those ladies would be a blessing to you. And so I'd encourage you ladies to come
come and bring your daughters, bring a friend, uh, invite someone to come and take advantage of that time. Now, Sunday, June 28th, and a month from today, Prayer Christian Academy is going to be having its graduation service, and we're looking forward to three of our young people finishing up, uh, Jed Holfeld, uh, Laura Schrick, and then my son, Jacob Dahl, who's standing in the back there and uh, helping get people seated. And so, But uh, we're excited for our young people. It's been a very different finish to the school year, unlike any other I ever remember, but you be praying for them as they take that next step, and I'm excited for them. Tuesday, June 30th is Prairie Christian Academy's Awards Night, Tuesday night, uh, June 30th, and so look forward to that. Guys, we do have our men's Bible studies that are scheduled on the first, first and third Tuesdays of the month. That'll be this Tuesday. Over at the North Building, 9 a.m., we're in the book of First Thessalonians, and some uh, come ready to share something there, and we'd love to have you take advantage. Uh, some prayer requests uh, tonight. Please continue to pray for Callie Faulkner. She was in a very bad accident here just a little less than two weeks ago she's healing up tremendously well um, but uh, you pray for her as she's going through that process also uh, continue to pray for brother Dan Lidberg as he battles cancer here and uh, his health is declining but wasn't it a blessing to have him with us this morning and my goodness if that didn't put a smile on your face and a tear in your eye I don't know what's wrong with you I really don't and so just a sweet time and a sweet man by the way uh, my wife and I dropped off a strawberry shake for him this afternoon we don't know what happened with it but we did drop one off so uh, we had some fun there uh, do pray for Brother Dave Starrett. He's still got some health issues going on, and so please pray for Brother Dave. I know he had a doctor's appointment on Friday, and uh, so hopefully they'll get some answers for him. But you pray for him. He wants to get back to work and get on with life, and so pray, pray, please pray for his health. Steve Hamill. Stevie Hamill was admitted to the hospital yesterday. Uh, he's been diagnosed with cellulitis. He is doing fine. He's doing better. I can't say he's doing fine, but he's doing better. I gave him a bunch of antibiotics, and hopefully he'll be released tomorrow, but he is healing up from that. They think it was due to a spider bite is what kind of kicked it off and so by the grace of God Steve's gonna feel better and uh, get home uh, let me see here I think that's all that I've got thanks so much for being here tonight brother John all right go ahead and stand again uh, number 140 if you have your hymnals 140 will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? We have an anchor that leaves a soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love it is safely more till the storms withstand for it is well secured by the Savior's hand though the tempest rage and the wild winds blow not in angry way shall our bark overflow. We have an anchor that keeps us whole, steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. When our eyes behold through the gathering night, the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore with the storms all past forevermore. We have an anchor that keeps us all steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the savior's love thank you very much of course yeah, go ahead and be seated and we're just going to take a moment here i'm going to have uh, brother michael Lindsay come up and he's uh tim and ann's uh well in-laws through their children. He'll explain, but he's going to tell us something nifty about the cake downstairs. I think it'll be interesting to you. My name is Mike Lindsay. My wife and I uh, from Cheyenne, Wyoming visiting, and 
Tim and Ann's oldest daughter is married to our oldest son. And that's how we know each other. And we also happen to have the same anniversary date. So thanks for coming to my anniversary. <laughs> I also want to thank uh, Preacher and all the people out here have been so nice to us visiting. It's been wonderful to come here and visit. But I do want to speak a little bit about the cake tonight. I don't know if any of you know a guy by the name of Jack Phillips or the Masterpiece Cake Company. But he refused, he's a Christian man, refused to make a cake for a gay wedding. And the state of Colorado came down hard on him, went all the way to the Supreme Court and won. And then he refused to make a cake for a sex change celebration. Pink on the inside, blue on the outside. And the state of Colorado came down on him hard again. This one was a little shorter and they backed off after there were a few threats made. That's two lawsuits. He's now under a third lawsuit, only this time civil, from somebody saying he violated his right, rights. So if anybody doesn't believe that Christians are under fire today, you got your head in the sand. And trust me, just like Pastor preached this morning, if you do and not just talk, the arrows will come and just be prepared for them. The cake downstairs was baked by Jack. He lives about, his bake shop is about 30 minutes south of my uh, mother and father-in-law's house, my wife's parents' house. And so we had a cake made. So before we cut it, y'all come down, take a look at this beautiful cake and then eat it because it tastes good too. <laughs> and so uh, you're all welcome and thanks for having us here. All right. By the way, that cake is not pink on the, blue, on the inside and blue on the outside. I just want to clarify. So, <laughs> All right. You know, let's go and stand to our feet. Let's sing uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We'll sing that a cappella. We'll sing that a cappella and have a good time doing that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Here we go. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you Alleluia, Alleluia. brother john all right you got your hymnals uh, number 208 208 Marvelous grace of our loving Lord, grace that exceeds our sin and our guilt. Yonder on Calvary's mount outpoured, there where the blood of the Lamb was spilled. Despair like the sea waves cold Threaten the soul with infinite loss Grace that is greater, yes, grace untold Points to the refuge, the mighty cross Grace, grace, God's grace it will pardon and cleanse within grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Dark is the stain that we cannot hide. What can avail? To wash it away, 
Look, there is flowing a crimson tide, whiter than snow you may be today. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within. Marvelous, infinite, matchless grace Freely bestowed on all who believe You that are longing to see His face Will you this moment Acapella Acapella, acapella Grace, grace, God grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse within, grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. Amen. Thank you very much. Men and Jacob Christian, come on up and sing. How much did you have to pay them to get in that group? <laughs> That's Life is over. I'll fly away, fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory. I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah, by and by. Brother Christian, did you respond to Brother Moore? I'll give you the microphone for a few moments. Uh, all right. Take your Bibles. Take your Bibles. Let's go to Psalm, Psalm chapter 56. And uh, appreciate you folks coming out tonight and being faithful to the house of God. And folks, it's, it's just a blessing to be in the, house of the God, in the house of God. It really is. I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. And Psalm 56, if you'd stand with me in reverence to the word of God, I'd sure appreciate that.
Folks, over the course of the next several weeks and months ahead, we're going to be taking steps forward and getting things back to, to normal, and uh, by the grace of God, better than normal. Uh, again, be quick to share the gospel. There's a wonderful opportunity there, and we'll look at that a little bit tonight here in some, in some facets, but I just want you to be burdened for the lost, and we have a great, a great opportunity to get, to get to Christ to people. Psalm 56, and we're going to read the first four verses. The Bible says, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He fighting daily oppresseth me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Let's pray. Lord, I, I come to you tonight, and I am so thankful for the privilege to stand in front of these people. Um, Father, your people. And God, give them the word of God. This is something that is uh, such a blessing, Lord, such a privilege. And I pray that, Lord, I would, I would treat it such. And that, Father, you would take the word of God and through the spirit of God, hide it and, and grab hold of our hearts. Uh, please do something in us tonight. Help us not to be content with where we're at, but help us to desire to, to grow, uh, Lord, by the, by the milk of the word and by the meat of the word. Uh, please grab hold of our hearts and our minds and do something with us tonight. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. This uh, psalm, um, and, and, and the title of it, it, tells us that it was written when the Philistines took David in Gath. And if you've got your Bibles, I, keep your finger in Psalm 56, that is our text tonight, but I want you to go to 1 Samuel in chapter 21. We're going to use our Bibles a little bit on a Sunday night here, so uh, stay with me, and I uh, want to give you some, some thoughts I think will be a help to you if you'll, if you'll follow with me. Psalm, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 21, 1 Samuel chapter 21. David has fled from Saul. He has left the, the land of Israel. He's gone into the land of the Philistines. Um, verse 10 says that, And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And then verse number 12, it says, in, and let's read verse 11, And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands? Verse 12, and David laid up these words in his heart and was what? Sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And so that's, that's when the, the, the historians and Bible scholars say that this psalm was written. And so David is afraid. What time I am afraid, he says, I will, I will trust in thee. Tonight, I, I want to I start out by making a few introductory statements. And that fear is a part of the fallen nature. Fear is a part of the fallen nature. It, it, take your Bibles to Genesis chapter number 3, by the way. This is the first time the word fear or afraid appears in the, in the scriptures. Genesis in chapter 3. The fear was, is, was and is foreign to the spiritual man. Genesis in chapter 3. Of course, we know now that Adam and Eve have sinned and uh, they have failed. In verse 8, it says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord call, God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was what? Afraid, Afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Fear is a part of the fallen nature. Uh, who, who, what, 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 what great man said fear is, makes cowards of us all? Was that Churchill? I, I don't know, maybe... So, but but uh, sin, sin is what brings fear, all right? S sin is what brings that fear. Tonight, I, I look at mankind, and folks, there are moments where we are afraid. I was listening to a story from the, the, the girls got together and had a camp out and, and had a good time, and one of the fellas told a scary story, and I, from what I understand, the, the circle started out where the girls were all way spread out far apart, and as the story got scarier and scarier in the dark, in the woods, they got closer and closer and closer and closer. And we've all experienced that, all right? We've all had moments of fear that, that has caught us. And I understand that. I identify with that. And, and I under, th th there is a fear that is a part of man. And we, we, have to, we have to be honest. Sometimes we say, I, I ain't scared of nothing. Y yes, you are, all right? I promise you, boy, there are things in this life that will put fear into our hearts. And David was a great man. David was a mighty man. Um, he killed a bear with his hands. He killed a lion with his hands. He killed a giant with a sling and a stone. Now, David was a man's man, correct? And yet David says, I'm afraid. 
There were times in his life, and I can't say that I've done what David did, but David, this great man, manly man, had fear in his heart. And so tonight, as we look at this, I want you to see fear, fear is, is a part of our fallen nature. All of us in this room are going to struggle with fear. You say, Pastor, if, we, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and doing how we're supposed we're never going to fear. Friend, as long as you have this flesh with you, you're going to deal with fear. You are. There's just no way away from that. You're going to deal with fear. And so tonight I want to look at Psalm 56, give you some thoughts. We're going to jump around the scriptures again a little bit more. I want to base this on the, on, the, on the word of God. But look at what David said. He says, what time I am afraid, I will what? Trust, Trust in thee. And then look at verse 4. It says, in God, I will what? Praise, praise his word. I will praise his world. Several, several weeks ago, I, I preached on the topic of praise, but, but tonight David is talking about something specific. He says, God, I am going to praise your word. God has revealed himself to me tonight through his word. It is only through his word that I can know of him and that I can know him. All right? In the garden, we just saw it in Genesis in chapter 3. He called himself the voice. In John's gospel, it's, he is called the word. It is through the word of God that I know him. I, I have his ordinances. I have his promises. I have his truths. I have his principles. I have his precepts. I have his commandments. I have his covenants. I have his judgments. I have his law. I have his testimonies. I have his statutes, and I have his ways. It is only through his word that I have his word. Do, do you understand that? Without this book I cannot know God so I will praise God through through his word all right the, the, the word of God was a big deal to David I will praise I, and God I will praise his word and so tonight I, I want us to understand that secondly he says this in God I will praise his word in God I have put my what Trust. See, because of God's word, I choose to believe him. I spoke this morning on faith, all right? There, there is something that is wonderful when I read God's word. I have the ability to choose by faith to believe God. Isn't that a wonderful thing? All right, because of God's word, I choose to believe him. That's faith. Now, fear, you say, well, well, pastor, what, is, what does fear have to do with this? Fear should bring a reaction in the believer's heart. And I want you to take your Bibles to 2 Corinthians in chapter number 1. 2 Corinthians in chapter number 1. We're going to see the same reaction in Paul as we saw in David. All right? 2 Corinthians in chapter number 1. Paul says this, verse number 8. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse number 8. It says, for we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 8, that we were pressed out of measure above strength insomuch that we despaired even of life. That's a sobering verse. Okay, that, that should, that, that should, when you come to that point in Corinthians, that should always sober you up a little bit. You know, I've heard people say, well, well God will never give you more than you can handle. Well, it looks like he gave Paul more than he could handle. Now, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. In Christ, all right, I have all strength. I can do all things. But in my flesh, <laughs> I cannot. And so Paul says, well, we came to a point where we were pressed out of measure, above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. But look what it says. But in God which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Fear should make me run to Christ. You see, in my flesh, I am weak. But friend, that's where he is strong. If you've got your Bibles, let's go a little later in 2 Corinthians in chapter number 12. 2 Corinthians in chapter number 12. You see... In God, David said, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I, I will praise his word. In, in God, I, I will trust in thee. David's saying, hey guys, fear is a part of life. Fear is going to happen. Fear is going to hit us, man. There are going to be moments that we look up and we say, how am I supposed to handle this? Or what am I supposed to do? What, you know, where are the directions for this part of life? That should drive us to our Savior. 2 Corinthians in chapter number 12, verse 7. Unless Paul's writing, he says, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of what? 
Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. And just so you're aware, folks, God is the one who allowed that thorn in his flesh. It was a messenger of Satan, but God allowed that, just like Job's life. Verse 8, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in what? Weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I'm, instru- then I'm strong. In God, I have put my trust. See, this, this is something that, that fear often causes us to try to rise to the occasion. Fear should cause a believer to run to Christ. I should run to, David did, and David was a great man. Paul did, and Paul was a great man. Fear should make me run to Christ. You know, you you, you scare a little one, you know. Uh, uh, And you know what they do? They run to mama or they run to daddy, don't they? Okay, that's, that's a perfect reaction from that child. And yet God's children have a tendency not to run to mom or dad, all right? We have a tendency to run to the flesh. We do not run to our Savior. We do not run to our God. And Christian, we're wrong for that tonight. Hey, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. And in God, I will trust in thee. And then look with me at the third thing here that David mentions. He says, thirdly, I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. The Bible tells us in Proverbs that the fear of man bringeth a snare. You know, folks, there's a lot of us as Christians that are not the Christians that God would have us to be because of fear. We're, we're, we're afraid that if we do what God said, somebody will make fun of us. Hey, some of us are not the husbands, guys, that we're supposed to be. You know why? Because we're afraid that she might take advantage of that. Ladies, some of you are not the wives. You ought to be because you're afraid that he'll take advantage of you. Hey, we, we sit back and we say, well, 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 well pastor, I, you know, I, you're afraid of what flesh can do. Yeah. Folks, in our, in our culture today, we're scared of what, of what the government can do with us. We're scared of what, what time I'm afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I... I will trust in in him, all right? I will not fear what flesh can do. See, folks, there's got to be a point where we just fear God and trust God and trust his word that we do not fear what man and what flesh can do. and, And there's a part of us in our Christianity that we've become, folks, let's be honest, we become reliant on the flesh. We become reliant on, on, on the finances. We become reliant on the government, and we have more of a fear of losing our, our, our check from the government than we do of losing fellowship with God. If you've got your Bibles, just let's go to Psalm 118. Again, I want you to see some scripture on this tonight, and this was, this was a blessing to my heart. Again, this is not a complex truth, but I believe it's one that we, we need to understand. David, a great man, a man who killed a bear, killed a lion, killed a giant, and said, I'm afraid. Well, how do we handle fear? Well, we praise God in his word. We put our trust in him. We refuse to let flesh instill more fear in our heart. Psalm 118, verse 5, it says, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. Look what verse 6 says. The Lord is what? Isn't that a great statement? The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Isn't that a great statement? Let's go to Psalm, uh, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. And I'll be done early tonight, all right? I really will. That's an amazing miracle. And I'm glad the Lindsays are here to experience it. (laughs) Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. The Bible says this, wonderful verses, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Friend, though we are going to be afraid, and it's going to strike our hearts, folks, let's face it, man, there's, there's moments of life that I haven't lived yet, and when, I, when I'm hit with them, I know they're going to take me back. 
I do. I know there's going to be moments where you just, you just don't know how to handle it. You don't know what to do. And there's, there's going to be fear that strikes my heart. What do I need to do? Well, I need to go to that book. And I need to trust in him. And I cannot allow flesh to cause me to fear. If you read the rest of the psalm, go back with me. David picks up again in verse number 5 after that declaration in verse 4. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Verse 5, every day they rest my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather themselves together. They hide themselves. They mark my steps when they wait for my soul. Shall they escape by iniquity in thine anger? Cast down thy, the people, O God. Thou tellest my wanderings. Put not my tears into the, thy bottle. Are they not in thy book? When I cry unto thee, thou shalt, that then shalt mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. Look what it says now in verse 10. In God will I praise his word. In the Lord will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. Christian, would you understand tonight? Fear is a part of our, our human life. Now, I have a God who's not afraid. Because God knows all things. He knows the, 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 the future from the past to in the present. He knows it all, all right? There's nothing for God. There's nothing to surprise God. But things are going to surprise me. Things are going to come down the pike. And I'm going to say, boy, I never saw that coming. I never thought that would happen. How do I handle this? David ran for his life. He had to run out of Israel and, and chose to leave that, that, that land of promise. And he ran to the land of the Philistines. And you, sometimes you look at that and say, David, why would you go to, to Philistia? I mean, the, if there was one place you probably shouldn't have gone, it would have been the land of the Philistines, all right? And I understand it was because Saul wasn't going to come in, but David was not a popular man in Philistia. That's where he ran. And he was afraid. But he writes the psalm and says, boy, what time I'm afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I will trust in thee. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. And Christian tonight, as we're dealing with things, I know some, some of you right now, there's, there's, there's problems. You're dealing with, with job situations. Some of you, you're, you're dealing with frustration or division within your family. You're dealing with, with, with stress and going through some things that it's hard to get answers. You, 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 you don't know what to say or how to say it. And, and there's fear. It's a part of the fallen nature. You say, boy, I don't know how to handle this. I've never been down this road before. Well, scripturally, we have an answer tonight. And folks, I look at David's life. And David said, God, I'll go to your word. I'll go to your word. And when I'm there, I'll praise you for it. God, I will trust in thee. I will choose to believe you, God. And I will not fear man. I wonder tonight in our own hearts as I look out if there's some of us that need to step back for a moment and say, God, here's the deal. I've allowed fear to run rampant. For 2 Timothy 1.7, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love. and of We know that, don't we? But fear tends to be a drive, driving force in our lives. We, we, we can run scared. And we try to bluster and, 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 and get our egos worked up so we can... You need to run to Christ. And Christian, I believe there's some of us in this room, I think all of us need to run to the Lord tonight. We need to get a little bit closer to him. I mean, you look at those words of the Apostle Paul, and Paul said, I would rather glory in my infirmities. I'll glory in my weakness. I'll glory in my distresses. I'll glory in my problems. You know why? They make me run to him. That doesn't sound like us, does it? Let me show you how strong I am. Let me show you how gifted I am. Let me show you how talented I am. Let me show you how, how, how capable I am. No. You run to Christ. And folks, there alone is where fear fades away. You see, there is no darkness in him. There are no shadows. There's no shade of turning. We have perfect light. And friend, when you can see perfectly, hey, you know that the other night at the camp out, girls, if you could have seen what was going on, it probably wouldn't have been so scary, would it? It was bright as daylight. And every, but when you don't know what's going on and you're afraid somebody's going to jump out of the weeds, 
That scares you, doesn't it? Folks, so it is with life. And Christian tonight, David said, what time I am afraid, hey, fear has entered into my heart. Here's a biblical answer on how to handle that fear. Let's go and stand to our feet. Folks, I know some of us tonight, we're, we're dealing with things in our life and things we don't have answers for. I, I can tell you as a man, that's one of the hardest places that I, I get to. I like to have answers. I like to know how to handle it. Sometimes life doesn't let you do that. David's running for his life. He's running from Saul, who he loved. He's gone to the land of the Philistines, and they're a king who is an unbeliever, who hates Jehovah God. Huh. It's not surprising he was afraid. But he did what God would have him to do. And Christian tonight, praise his word. Praise his word. You've got to know his word to praise it, do you not? Right? Huh. And God will I trust. And I will not fear what man can do unto me. Friend, we have to have a greater fear of God than we do a fear of man. And when that happens, we have an assurance that the Lord's going to take care of us. And friend, I would just pray that tonight, in your heart of hearts, that you let the Lord do something. As, we, as we're all dealing with some things, say, I'm going to be, it's going to be all right. You know why? I'm running to Jesus. I'm running to Jesus. It's going to be okay. As you begin to play, if the Lord's laid something in your heart, I'd encourage you to come to the altar tonight. Well, folks, thank you so much for coming tonight. Fear, um, folks, renders us useless. It does. It, 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 it literally causes us to just accomplish nothing. We've got, we cannot allow fear to rule in our lives. You know, you, you go back and look at the life of David. Read the Psalms. He dealt with this a lot. You know, sometimes you say, oh, I'm not, I'm never, if you're afraid something's wrong with you, read Psalms and tell me. Tell me how, how unmanly a man David was. He dealt with this problem, and we do. We're human, we're frail, we are weak. That shouldn't come as a shock to us. He said, oh, I'm strong, I'm capable. You're lying to yourself. I know, you're 18 and you're bulletproof, all right? Give it another 15 years and you'll find out real quickly. Right? Amen. Yeah, don't you remember when you were that age? Nothing could touch you, and then it did. <laughs> uh, we've got to understand there's a biblical answer and a biblical model to follow. And I, I love the fact when I read 2 Corinthians, I was just studying for this and read that in verse 1. Paul said the same thing David did. 
He said, man, I despaired even my life, but hey, I will trust in God. He's delivered my soul from death. Folks, we got a great God. Let's trust in him. Let's, let's be dismissed with a word of prayer. Um, if you get a chance, go downstairs and congratulate the Brahms and the Lindsays. That's, that's highly entertaining, celebrating the same anniversary on the same day. And uh, they're, they're a, the, Tim and Ann have been a wonderful blessing, wonderful neighbors, and I appreciate them. And go downstairs and, and grab a cupcake. I think Yvette, did you make the, you made the cupcakes, did you not? Yvette makes a great cupcake. She does. That, that woman is gifted. And uh, I, I'd encourage you, if nothing else, grab one of those and admire the cake made by Jack. So, and at least see if it's pink on the inside, yes? But I'm teasing. But no, praise the Lord. And folks, you can, by the way, you can make an impact on your culture. All right? I mean, that guy, he, he's a baker, but he's standing for Christ. And that's, that's incredible. And praise the Lord for that. I think that's a tremendous story. And I, I, didn't, I didn't put the pieces together for a few moments. This morning he was telling me about it and then it clicked. But thank the Lord for that. But I appreciate you. Good to have you in the service tonight. Brother Joel Gerlach, would you dismiss us with a word of prayer? And uh, we'll be dismissed after.